All right, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to Prime Logic's Math Corner. Here we uh, turn complex problems into simple solutions. Today we are diving into another fascinating Math Olympia challenge. So get ready to unravel the secrets of numbers and exponents with me today. So let's get us started. Uh, the, the problem, the equation that you can see for today is from the Math Olympiad. So here we have 8 to the power of x plus <clears throat> 2 to the power of x equals 130. And we need to find x. So let's, let's start now. Before, before diving into these, I want you to pause the video for a couple of seconds or maybe more to, to kind of structure your thoughts. So as, as I mentioned before, as I stated before, the first and foremost and something that is of utmost importance is how to structure your thoughts, how to channel your thoughts and find different avenues towards solving the problem. So don't just rush into writing. Okay? <clears throat> so the first thing here that comes to mind is we can reshuffle, we can rewrite 8 or this term as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x equals 130. Okay. So here I, I want you... I want to remind you of a very famous yet fundamental uh, exponential relationship about ter exponential terms. So whenever we have a uh, to the power of m, again, the whole bracket to the power of n, we can rewrite it as a to the power of mn or nms. It doesn't make, make any difference because that's a product. And because of this relationship or property, we can rewrite it, we can reverse uh, replace the exponent. We can write it as a to the to the power of n, not m, the whole thing to the power of m. So this is again a to the power of mn or nm. Doesn't make any difference. So let's write it here as 2 to the power of x to the power of 3. So here it is the same as writing a 2 to the power of x cubed or to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of x equals 130. Okay, now what? So let's have an assumption. So let's assume that y equals 2 to the power of x because it makes it way easier for us to solve for y and at the end of the video solve for x later. So let's rewrite it in this way. Y, so replacing to the, to the power of x with y. So y cubed plus y equals 130. So let's take 130 to the other side. y cubed plus y minus 130 equals 0. So now what? This is a third degree equation. So here we need to use a ploy or a trick kind of to make it easier for, for us. And remember, factorization and identities are your best and true friends in, in this type of equation, especially exponential equation, because you need to find a way to decode kind of to penetrate into this whole uh, nasty kind of equation. So let's take 130, for example. So 130 is a product of many numbers. It, it has many divisors. But for the sake of this video, I'm, I'm not sure. Of course, there, are, there must be more ways. You can use your own method. So if you come up with a different divisor, different strategy and method to solve this video, please write it down in the comment sections below. So for today's video, we can, we can say that one of the divisors or factors of 130 is 26 and 5. So 5 times 26 is 130. But let's, let's rewrite this thing, this, this formula, as this. So y cubed. Let's rewrite y as 26y, because we need it to, to factor it out. 25y minus, uh, sorry, 26y minus 25y. So 
minus 25y plus 26y. So it is a still 1y, right? There is no, no argument over this. So this is y. So we just rewrote it like this, minus 130 equals 0. Now we need to use identities, right? But not now. We, we, need to, we need to take some factors out at first. So let's take a y out here at first. So from these two terms, we can take a y. So I think things are getting a little familiar. We are stepping and treading into some familiar grams. So let's take one y out. So y times y, y squared minus 25. Yes, of course, it sounds familiar, this identity. Let's take 26 here. So that's why we chose 26 as the divisor. So 26 times y minus, so divide 130 divided by 26 is 5. Okay, again, something familiar. So this is the most famous identity, by the way. So a squared minus b squared. So let's rewrite it here. So whenever we have a squared minus b squared it equals to a plus b times a minus b. So here we can rewrite this a squared minus b squared. So again, let's expand it. y times y plus 5 times y minus 5 plus 20 6 times y. Again, another common factor. So let's factor it out again. So uh, we can rewrite it as, uh, yeah, so y minus 5 in the brackets times y times y plus 5 plus 26 equals zero. So now it's it's way easier now. So we have two products, two entities, the product of which is zero. So whenever we have such a relationship, each of those must be zero. So either this is zero or this is zero. So one time, one, one, uh, sorry, y minus five equals zero. So one solution, solution number one, y equals 5, because y minus 5 equals 0, so then y must be 5. Okay, what about this thing? This thing that is factored out, let's expand it. So this thing, we are just ex expanding this thing. So y squared plus 5y plus 26 equals y. So this is a quadratic function. For solving, uh, and at first checking, if the quadratic functions have any solutions or not. So of course there, there are unreal solutions, but unreal solutions or imaginary numbers, they're out of uh, the scope of this today's video. So we need to find the discriminant. So what is the discriminant? It is also known as delta. So delta equals uh, a b squared minus four ac. And the general formula for a quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So let's find the delta. Delta equals b squared, 5 squared, 25 minus 4. a is 1 times c is 26. So obviously that's a negative num number because so that's uh, 25 minus 104, which is 79, minus 79, sorry. So that's a negative number. So whenever delta is negative, then this, this equation, this quadratic function, has no solutions at all. There is no solution for this because this curve, this parabola, it doesn't intersect the x-axis at all. 
So either, it is either above that or under that. It doesn't, it doesn't intersect that. So there is no, so no real solution. Let me write it down. No real solution. So you might be asking, so are there any unreal solutions? Yes, of course, there is an unreal solution. This is out of the scope of today's class. So we, need, we, we know that 5, y equals 5. Then our first and fundamental assumption was y equals 2 to the power of x. So 2 to the power of x equals 5. We need to solve for x. Finally, that nasty problem. So here, the first thing that comes to mind in this type of equation, uh, exponential equation, is, the, is to take the log or the logarithm of both sides. Of course, there is a very, very instant solution at this point. So those uh, little more advanced students, they can just say, okay, this is so the solution, just one line. But for those of you who, who prefer maybe a step-by-step -step kind of approach, let's take the log of uh, both sides. So, uh, log 2 to the power of x equals log 5. So now let's divide both sides uh, by log, log, log of 2. So let me write it down here. So log 2 to the power of x over log 2 equals log 5 over, sorry, I forgot to write it here, just like two. So let's simplify that. So whenever we have log a to the power of b, we can rewrite it as b times log a. So let's rewrite it in this way. So we can take x out and multiply it by, by that. So x times log a. 2 over like 2 equals like uh, 5 over like 2. So these two things cancel out. So uh, I forgot like 2. So x equals like 5 over like 2. Another important uh, logarithmic relationship is, so whenever we have log A over log B, we can rewrite it as log A to the base of B. So here, so we, we need to rewrite it in this way one more time. So I will write it down here. So x equals log 5 to the base of 2. And that's our answer. So let's come back to this step one more time. So for those of you who are familiar with logarithms, so you could say, yes, of course. So there is an x, there is a power x to which... The base 2 must be raised in order to achieve 5. So that's the definition of logarithm. So this, this term here, so it means that, that the base 2 must reach to a power to reach 5. And this is a value. This is a number. I don't know how much is that. You can give it to a calculator, and then you can calculate that. And it, it, uh, you, can check, you can put it in, in this... Uh, basic equation here, and of course, it, it, you can verify that. And I want you to tell me uh, if, you, if you came up with a different solution, if, if you, uh, with a different approach, I mean, and, and please share it uh, down in the comment sections below. So I think that's it for today's video. Thanks for 
watching and thanks for sticking with me through this exponential adventure. If you found any, any value in this video, if you found this video interesting, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and, and make sure to, to ask any questions or maybe put your solutions in the comment sections below and hit that bell, the bell icon to get notified about our upcoming uh, problems, solutions, and grammar quizzes. So share your thoughts or any questions in the comments below and let's keep the math conversation uh, going. So until next time, as always, keep solving, keep learning, and keep your logics prime. See you in our next video. Bye for now.